Hi, everybody. I'm Tammy of the Koreafornian Cooking and the Zen Kimchi Food Journal. And today we're going to make kimchi. Now, not just any kind of kimchi. I have a couple of people here that are going to help teach you how to make kimchi in Northern California. To my left is Hector Maraquin, the Napa Valley chef of Napa Valley Chef Catering. And to my right, I have Kathy DeFever, who is kind enough to lend us her kitchen today so we can spread out all the ingredients here for you and kind of show you the steps of how to make kimchi when you're not in the mother country to have access to all the ingredients that Koreans have access to to make kimchi. Really all you need to make kimchi, when it comes right down to it, is cabbage, radish, a little bit of salt and a little bit of sugar, and some time to ferment. But what makes Korean kimchi in particular such an iconic item on any menu are the peppers that the Koreans have put into their kimchi. But here on the other side of the Pacific, we may not have access to the different kinds of peppers that Koreans have access to, so we have to adapt and in a sense regionalize the kimchi for what we can find here in the California wine country. Kathy asked me which peppers to get. I suggested mulato or chile negro, pasilla, New Mexico chili pod or California chili pods, uh, some chile arbol or the japon pepper, the mulato or the chile negro and the pasilla peppers. These peppers have a nicer, sweeter type of character to them and a little meatier than these. These two peppers are actually very similar in character. The, uh, the California chili pot and the New Mexico chili pot. So I usually only get one of, or the other, whatever it's available to me. Okay, I prefer to go to a Mexican store, right, that has a, a wide variety of these particular peppers. Unfortunately, up here where I live, I was only able to get the California chili pod, the New Mexico, the harpoon, and the arbol. And this particular blend is actually a little hotter than my blend because she has in, she has incorporated uh, the arbol and the hapon. Now I normally will do only 25% of either of the arbol or the hapon to the rest by weight to the rest of the sweeter peppers, okay? And I found that that was a nice balance for the general population. And it's nice to make a pace as opposed to putting in a flake. When I originally started doing this, I was using the dry, I would make a dry flake from these particular blends, right? But I noticed a graininess that was involved in the, in the final product. So I came up with the idea of maybe making the paste instead, and it turned out to be very nice. So now we have a nice, smoother texture when the kimchi is, is made. With the larger pods here, we take out the seeds and we leave the smaller peppers, we leave them whole, com complete with their seeds, okay? Give them a rinse, we don't know where they've been, okay? And then I bring some boiling water and I pour them on there just to cover. And I let them soak for about 20 minutes. This is, to me, is a safe way to do it, uh, you know, because we are doing an anaerobic fermentation, okay? And so we need to worry about things like botulism. Okay, so this will, uh, in effect, pasteurize the peppers to make sure that, you know, that there's no contamination in there. In this case here, we have two medium-sized Napa cabbage, and they're cut in quarter. We then take about 10 cups of water and a half a cup of coarse sea salt. We dissolve that sea salt thoroughly, making sure that's dissolved. Alrighty, and then we submerge these quarter pieces into the water and if you, you will need something to hold them down to make sure that they're totally submerged, usually maybe another bowl, put some water inside of it and then just put it down into there so they're submerged. Let them sit for about five hours or until they're soft, usually five hours is right, right. okay. And then of course we rinse them a couple of times after we, we take them out of its brine. When they get soaked in and, and submerged, they, uh, they get all wet and they, they shrink down. So you, at, at first it's very deceiving. It, it seems like you need more volume of a container to do it in. And then in, in a very short period of time, they really start going down. Not quite as thin as a julienne. Remember, we need to be able to conserve them so they don't fall apart. 
and they're fermenting. That's one thing that fermentation can do is it can just dissolve vegetables. This is kimchi juice from our last batch that we made. And what I've decided to do is to use it as a starter to, to speed up the process, kind of jump, jump kick, you know, jump start the, uh, the, the, the fermentation process. And it adds a, a more consistent product. And uh, we've had to, uh, you know, we would have short windows of time where we needed our kimchi for our market. And so and within five days, we really have a nice kimchi with a good fermentation going on when I started using the starter. Well, let me ask you this then. Um, if you start totally from scratch without starter, how long will it take for you to have sour kimchi that would be ready to eat? Well, I mean, within five days or so, if it's well sealed, but it just doesn't have, you know, that really good sour taste to it, I, as opposed to when I started using the starter. I, uh, I was truly amazed the first time I used the starter. I went in the next day, and after I had it wrapped up, it had really expanded, because I had it wrapped up with, uh, with plastic wrap over to totally seal it, you know? And the plastic wrap had expanded like a balloon, and just overnight, and I can taste the pickling very nice into it, as opposed to the first time I did it after one week. Rice flour slurry, one half of a sweet apple, Fuji or Gala works well. One fourth of an onion. Two tablespoons of sugar. Three quarters of a cup of chili paste. One fourth to one third a cup fish sauce. Three tablespoons minced garlic. One tablespoon minced ginger. Half tablespoon salt. Two tablespoons of sesame seeds. And kimchi juice starter. Here are the vegetables that you will add to the kimchi paste. One daikon radish, julienne. One bunch of green onions, julienne. One medium onion, julienne. Three whole serrano or jalapeno peppers, sliced. And once you put these into the paste and stir it all together, you will use this mixture to stuff in between the leaves of two heads of Napa cabbage that have been quartered. Just a little light sprinkling of the salt in between. There you go. This is an anaerobic process. Okay, that means that it's a it's an action that with the absence of air. So you need to seal it, the container up very well. We're gonna leave it out for 24 hours for the first day, and then you can put it in your refrigerator for another four days or so. Even though kimchi is a uniquely Korean dish that goes back hundreds and even thousands of years, those of us on the other side of the Pacific have an opportunity to make kimchi a uniquely Californian and uniquely American dish. Think of the kimchi experience as an adventure in making your own California-style kimchi. Thank you for watching.